अच्छा जी चले बिस्मिल्लाह तो व्हाट वे टॉकिंग अबाउट इज जेनरेटिव क्लासिफायर्स और जेनरेटिव क्लासिफायर्स के अंदर स्पेसिफिकली गाउसियन डिस्क्रिमिनेट एनालिसिस राइट व्हिच इज आल्सो समटाइम नोन एज जीडीए ठीक है सो व्हाट आर द मॉडलिंग अजम्पशंस इन जीडीए क्यों इर्जा व्हाट आर द मॉडलिंग अजम्पशंस इन जीडीए अभी देखनी पड़ेगी मैं वही देख रहा हूँ सामने लिखी हुई है स्क्रीन पे राइट सो दीज आर द मॉडलिंग एग्जाम्पन इन जी डी ए राइट विच इज के यू इन इन जी डी ए वॉट यू एज्यूम इज द फीचर गिवन अ क्लास लेवल आर एक्चुअली ज्वाइंटली गाउसिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एंड फॉर अ गिवन क्लास लेवल के दीचर्स आर गाउसिंग विद मीन म्यू के वैक्ट मीन वैक्ट म्यू के एंड कोविनियस मेट्रिक्स सिग्मा के ठीक है तो अब the first step if you're given some training data for example if this is a training data that, that you're given for this given training data the first step you will do is you try to train the model you will learn the model right now what does that entail that entails first of all determining the mean vectors for each and every one of the classes right and it entails determining so this is a this is a bar here because the vector and it entails Uh, estimating the covariance matrix for each and every one of those classes okay so this is going to go on uh, for so k equals 1 to all the web jitni bhi classes maujood hain right so all the way up to capital c okay so that's the first step where that's which is just which involves uh, trying to estimate the parameters so once you have the estimated parameters so which said ki let me denote those estimated parameters by this theta hat okay so these are the estimated parameters right now uh, for k equals 1 all the way up to c so ye sare ke sare it's a collection of vectors and collection of matrices that's a set of parameters that you've estimated um which also actually includes the set of parameters pi k hat bhi aapko chahiye right so these are these the class price that you've estimated which is very very easy to find right then in order to do as uh, in order for us to do the prediction um, you would compute the probability the posterior probability of the uh, variable y which is a class label being equal to k given some test features that you have given x aapko given hai and you are required to determine ki what is more likely class label 1 class label 2 or whatever theek hai so you compute these probabilities uh, these posteriors are uh, using bayes rule can be written as some constant times the probability of x given y equals k times the class prior um and then you'll just maximize over the class level right aur ye karte karte humne so you go through the some of that math and we found out ki ji at the time of the prediction this is what you would need to minimize a time of prediction this is what you would need to minimize and this is the something called the kya kehlata hai janab पूछना आप बताएं कैन यू कैन वाई बी नॉर्मल सर इट कैन कैन बी नॉर्मल आई आई री वाली आई क्लेम कि वो हो ही नहीं सकती नॉर्मल वाई इज द डिस्क्रीट सेट ऑफ लेबल्स यस ठीक है फरीद सो असल में वाई जो है वो तो डिस्क्रीट लेबल्स हैं अह क्लास लेबल्स हैं अच्छा अच्छा सही ओह ठीक है वो तो नॉर्मल हो ही नहीं सकता Okay. Okay. So, uh, so at the end of the day, that means in order to do for us to do the prediction, we would have to minimize this Mahanlobi sensor. Of course, as you may, we'd have to incorporate this as well, uh, which we said that yeah, if it's not this, and it's not this, then you have to minimize Mahanlobi sensor. Minimize it. And what is it? Well, that's just uh, sort of a weighted average, or in other words, weight 
uh, distance computation in another space, asal mein yor hota hai, right? So you Euclidean space se you go into another space, aur us space mein Euclidean distance nikal ke fir wapas aate hain, uh, and that's basically Mahanur Obis. That's another way to think about this. Kisi ne projections ki baat ki thi yahan pe, khan mein hamza apne kaha kuch kaha tha uh, about eigen values, eigen uh, SVDs. Mara, lekin we're not going to go go that out, okay? So what we want to do today is to discuss a specific form of gda which is called lda which is linear discriminant analysis is ka naam suna pehle kabhi lda ka is sense mein is sense mein nahi suna aur kahan pe suna hai kis sense mein suna hai as in sir lda ha huh? lda lower development authority nahi as a, as a, स्पेशल केस ऑफ जी सो so it's a special case of gda or uh, one of the things i want to just mention here is ke if you do get a chance to go through um, andrews notes or cs229 wale notes uh, you'll uh, see ke usme he refers he starts out with gda and actually gda wo lda ko kehta hai right we are using a different terminology gda is more general for us and lda is a special form of gda okay anyway uh, compared to rgda uh, lda may there is a there is a special case in the sense ke ji we are going to make some modeling assumptions and those modeling assumptions is going to be ke our assumption is going to be that the covariance matrix for all classes are exactly the same theek okay? hai so it's not a function of k in other words k no matter what the class label is uh, whether it's um, it's uh, is men or it's women uh, the covariance matrix for those features are going to stay the same okay means may be different right means must be different by the way right why do i say that k means must be different otherwise when you categorizing them to har kisi ka distance agar ek hi mean yeah. ho to sub classes se ek hi jata hai exactly agar if the mean exactly the same as well to phir that means those features are actually independent of the class labels and there's no way you can do any meaningful classification yes. with those features ji sir mai kehta hu probability same aa jayegi kyunki the probability same agar exactly exactly which as essentially if you really now dig a little bit deeper you'll see ke jo features hain x those features x that you have picked they become independent of the class labels and therefore they convey no information about the class labels right anyway so for this um uh, lda assumption uh, let me go back to the prediction step which is the probability uh, and what i want to do next is just to try to illustrate ke ye why is this called um, lda i mean why is this so my screen just went black sorry so why is it called lda give me a minute okay so that's what we want to do so if i wish to compute the procedure i mean this is similar to what we've done earlier so x theta hat um this is going to be proportional to the probability x given y equals k theta hat times probability y equals k given theta hat right just using bayes rule right um and this therefore is equal to so i just see ye kya hai what is this this is just the joint gaussian distribution right so the joint gaussian distribution this is 1 upon 2 pi raised to power d by 
times sigma determinant half and this is e raised to power minus half x minus mu k transpose sigma inverse times x minus mu k and times pi k. Right? So, is that clear? Any questions about this? Clear? Clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So, it's like, yeah, this is then again proportional to e raised to power minus half x minus mu k transpose sigma inverse x minus mu k. And let me bring this here, log here, log of pi k hat. Is that clear? You can't see again. Right. Right, so I've just uh, pi k ko log and the lake exponential can the so that I just have a single exponential term. Right? And the reason why I can get rid of this entire thing here uh, is because there's just a constant. Right? So this thing here is not dependent on k. So that's the difference between GDA and LDA. When GDA, I can get rid of that. Uh, sorry, in LDA, I can get rid of this. Okay? So, let me expand uh, the thing inside the exponential a little bit. So this is e raised to power minus half, and I'm gonna get four terms here, right? So this is going to be x transpose sigma inverse times x, right? That's the first term. And minus half, mu k transpose times sigma inverse times mu k, right? That's the second term, plus half mu k transpose times sigma inverse times x and plus half, uh, who's gonna help me? X transpose sigma inverse times mu k and then log of pi k. Fine. Any concerns so about the log of pi k exponential can the up consideration? Yes, we see you pi k ta. Yampe the king pi k by ta. That's another way you can do it, by the way. And that's perfectly fine, Hamza. You, what you can do is you could take a log lake separate and then expand. That should have been okay as well. Yeah. Ab, then I observe K. Can I say, challenge? Can I say something about this term here and this term here? Is that your relationship out me? It take the sick transpose. Yeah, I go sick transpose. They will result the same other diagonal in eh? our hmm? covariance matrix. No, covariance matrix is not diagonal. I'm not, I've not told you that. So, so Covini's matrix may not necessarily be diagonal. Right. It is symmetric though. Symmetric is the same. Symmetric is the same. They are exactly the same. Right? And the reason why they are exactly the same is not because it was symmetric. Otherwise, this is a scalar. Right? This is a scalar. And this is also a scalar. 
दैट मीन्स दैट मीन्स इसका ट्रांसपोज इसके ट्रांसपोज के बराबर होना चाहिए और एक्चुअली इसका ट्रांसपोज इसी के ट्रांसपोज के बराबर होना चाहिए राइट एंड यू देन फिगर आउट कि जी दिस एक्चुअली टर्म इज अ ट्रांसपोज ऑफ दिस टर्म एंड देर फोर दे मस्ट बी द सेम एज वेल राइट सो माई कंक्लूजन इज के दे आर एक्चुअली द सेम स्केलर्स राइट यहां पे किसी को कंफ्यूजन so let me then pull out the exponential term with minus half x transpose sigma inverse x outside and then this is e raised to power so this is so so this plus this we get rid of the half right so this will just be mu k transpose sigma inverse times x and kya chahiye bachke minus half mu k transpose sigma inverse mu k plus log of pi k All right and this thing once again this is not dependent on k right so therefore this is proportional to e raised to power mu k transpose sigma inverse x minus half mu k transpose sigma inverse mu k plus log of pi k so this is uh, the probability that y equals k given x and given theta hat so this posterior probability is proportional to is proportional to this term over here now in order to see why this is called lda uh, let me just uh, for for uh, ease of understanding let me just focus on a two class problem right so for simplicity Let's focus on a two-class problem. Right. So in other words, I'm saying that k could either be a one or a two. So there are only two classes that I'm dealing with. Right. So in if, as far as the the prediction is concerned, when will my decision be a one? When will my decision be a zero? Or tell me a two. When should I decide that the class level one was? When probability y equal to one given x bar theta should be greater than probability y equal to two given x bar theta. And when this condition is not satisfied, my decision should be two, right? So it's it's a it's a converse. Okay. So so I can say that the probability that y equals one given x and theta hat, and if I have probability that y equals one given x. Theta hat, uh, sorry, zero. If this thing is greater, my decision should be a one, right? If on the other hand the left hand side is less than the right hand side, my decision should be, oops, decision should be. I'm using a two. Uh, okay, is that clear? What if they are both the same by by the way? Sir, कोई भी choose करना है। So then they're equally likely. I'm, and you can flip a coin if you want to. ठीक है? अच्छा। 
Uh, let me uh, um, elaborate. So let me uh, just plug in, uh, plug in this thing here into this thing here. Okay. So probability y equals one given x theta hat is greater than probability y equals two x theta hat if this thing for k equals one is greater than this thing for k equals two. Is there a question? Yeah. So just now we mentioned that okay, what if they're equal then they're equally likely. Yeah. So initially we talked about that is this a two-way relationship? That you said that mu k if it's same, ho jai, my probability is same. Can yeah. we also say that if probability is same, hai, then that would imply that our mu k is same. Aa hai? No, not really. That's why. Because if mu k is were the same. So question, sir, question, sir, question is very interesting. Uh, so repeat the question. Uh, so question is that we said in the beginning that if the means were exactly the same for both classes, then if I computed the posterior, the posterior would have turned out to be the same for both classes. Okay, that's what I said in the beginning. Okay, so therefore those features would not have been useful. Now Hamza is saying that if I go ahead and evaluate this probability, and I evaluate this probability, and I find out that this probability is the same as this probability, does that mean that their means were the same? No, it's not necessary. Why is it not necessary? Because if we try to see it in 1D plane, which are two Gaussians, if my point is in the center, then both of them can come to the same probability. They can come to the same probability. So what is the difference between this case and that case? This case is uniform distribution. Yes, sir. Because there is also a pi k element which is for our class determination. तो अगर तो हमारे प्राइस जो हैं वो सेम हैं उस लिहाज से तो सिर्फ हम यूके के बारे में कह सकते हैं लेकिन ये पाई के अगर डिफरेंट होगा तो फिर उसकी बेसिस पे भी फर्क आ सकते हैं। इट्स 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 मोर टू डू विथ व्हाट एक्स इज़ मेयर सो माय पॉइंट इज़ गन बी माय आर्गुमेंट इज़ गन बी कि फॉर Okay, whereas if the mu's were different, then there's only a few as there's a subset of x, which is a very, very small subset for which this probability is going to turn out to be the same probability. For all other values of x, one of them is going to be greater than the other. Okay, and, and I'm going to show you again illustration, then I'll show you uh, elaborate on this further as well. Okay, Hamza. Hamza, you get the point? Yes, sir. Okay. So there's not a one way, uh, there's not a two way implication, right? So that's the bottom line. Acha. Ab, so let me uh, uh, expand this further. Or, so maybe I'm going to skip a step. No, let let's me not step, skip a step. So this is e raised to power mu k transpose so the mu is one here mu one sigma inverse x minus half mu one transpose sigma inverse mu one plus log by one is greater than is less than one, and this is two. Over here, what will happen on the right hand side? Mu two, sir. Ah, who will tell me? Who will tell me? You, Rafi, right hand side. What will happen? Same thing will happen, but in the subscript, it will be two. Good. So this is just mu two, sigma inverse. If I look at someone's face, I don't know if they are sitting here or not sitting here. So, so this is mu two transpose sigma inverse, and then this is mu two plus log pi two. Right. So when when the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. Right? 
uh, your decision is going to be one. Otherwise, your decision is going to be two. Now, ab isme aage karna kya chaaro? So let's let me see if somebody can help me here. What I'm trying to do here is to try to find a condition on X on the on the on the features, so that if that condition is satisfied, I'm going to say ye ye class level one tha. If that condition is not satisfied, ye class level two tha. Or in other words, what I want to do is that X to have that resides in a d-dimensional space, right? In the d-dimensional space of features. I want to figure out for what values of X in this d-dimensional space is my class prediction is going to be one. And for what values of my features in this d-dimensional space would my prediction be class level two? Okay, so that's what I want to do. How do I proceed from, from here given that my objective is what I just mentioned? Sir, we log 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 Minus mu two mu uh, one minus mu two transpose or pair ye jo, uh, sigma x ye x side pe aajega, baaki side. Excellent. So I can take the log on both sides, or I can just use the argument that exponential e raised by something uh, is a monotonically increasing function. So um, so if this thing is greater than this thing, that means its argument is greater than the argument of this, right? So this means give mu one transpose sigma inverse x minus half mu one transpose sigma inverse mu one plus log of phi one. If it's greater than the mu two transpose sigma inverse x minus half mu two transpose sigma inverse mu two plus log of phi two. Okay. Sir, you have written the step of mu two transpose ki se mu two. Likh diya. Isle bolte bhi thoda issue hai. Okay, okay. Let me see. Yeah, so this is transpose. Uh, all right. So what do I do? As, as Hassan uh, he said, okay, let me just uh, bring all the X terms together and all of the con constants on the other side. Um, so, so this implies that mu one transpose minus mu two transpose times sigma inverse times x if that is greater than one or your two if that is greater than and i'm going to bring everything else on the other side right so everything else me kya hai? that's half mu one transpose sigma inverse mu one um, minus log of pi one and minus half mu two transpose sigma inverse mu two plus log of phi two, right? So I'm getting a, a, a better picture of what's going on. If I say, okay, yeah, let's this be beta transpose and all of this term here, which by the way is a scalar, all of this thing is a scalar, right? So let me call that as gamma. Right, so the condition reduces to beta transpose. Sorry. Play around with the colors. So beta transpose x. If it's greater than gamma, then my decision is going to be one. If it's less than gamma, my decision is going to be two. Right, so the, the conclusion that you have is that this condition is going to define the decision regions.
and what does this correspond to i mean kis kis tarah ki boundary aayegi so is there is a hyperplane banenge it's going to be a hyperplane it's a linear so there's a linear relationship right and that's why it's called linear discriminant analysis okay now if i were to uh, depict this graphically um so so for a two dimensional space let's say there's um there are two features so this is feature 1 and this is feature 2 Okay. Yeah. So my, for example, there is one data cluster that's given to me, right? And then there is another cluster that's given to me, which is say, so circles. Let's see over that a little bit. so the so let's say this is the data that's available to you for the two classes what is the first step that you're going to do the first step that you're going to do is you're going to try to learn the parameters right when you learn the parameters koi ek centroid iska aayega for this class label right and then there is going to be a centroid uh, for this class label somewhere right which is mu 2 this is mu 1 the yellow thing this is mu 1 and let's say this is mu 2 right and then you compute the the covariance matrix which is just one uh, covariance matrix which is something you estimate and that gives you some some counters right or isi tarah it's going to have the same distribution right what lda says is ke if i were to sketch Uh, if i were to sketch the decision boundary between these two classes what would it look like kyun fasi what would it look like sir a separate ho raha hoga uh, the line gamma ke sath ha so decision region kya hoga decision boundary hogi that will be a straight line right that's what lda tells us okay that's that the cn region the cn boundary is going to be a straight line right so this would be a the cn boundary right any time that your features reside over here on this side of the boundary your decision is going to be yellow right when you when you're making the prediction whenever your decision boundary or your features reside on this side of the boundary over here your decision is going to be whatever this color is kya ji pink hai theek hai and and this is why it's called lda because what it ends up doing is is ends up uh, drawing a, a linear boundary between the decision regions okay now Hamza, coming back to your point, features कैसे होंगे for which both classes become equally likely, or in other words, where do the features have to reside for the classes to become equally likely? The features के testing point. Ah, uh, so features the testing point features. Right. क्या होंगे किधर होंगे इसी एक्सेस के ऊपर इधर आप ही बताएं सर मैं अगर दोनों के सिग्मा सेम है जैसे एलडीए की कंडीशन है तो इक्विडिस्टेंस पॉइंट होगा ना जो दोनों से या एक फीचर पॉइंट जो इक्विडिस्टेंस हो दोनों के सेंटर से वहां पे प्रोबेबिलिटी सेम आएगी इक्विडिस्टेंस से क्या मतलब है यूक्लिडियन डिस्टेंस की इक्विडिस्टेंस सर अगर दोनों की क्लास प्रोबेबिलिटी भी सेम हो मतलब इस तरह का कोई सेंटर में एक सेट ऑफ पॉइंट्स बनेगा जहां पे वैल्यू सेम आएंगे अच्छा जो क्लास लेवल सेम नहीं है और क्लास प्रायर सेम नहीं है पाई 1 इज नॉट इक्वल टू पाई 2 फिर एक की तरफ ज्यादा टिल्ट होना शुरू हो जाएगा आप, आपको फिगर नजर आ रही है जी सर यहां भी आंसर भी छुपा हुआ है ओ लाइन के ऊपर लाइन के ऊपर राइट तो इफ इफ योर फीचर्स रिसाइड ऑन दिस बाउंड्री एग्जैक्टली ऑन दिस बाउंड्री 
the feature reside exactly on this boundary, that is when the probability that is, is equal to class level yellow is exactly the same as the probability that's class level pink. All right. Okay. And what is the probability, by the way, if the feature reside exactly on the boundary? That's an interesting question. I, I think that's probability is zero. Uh, sir, uh, if we take it would still be a linear discriminatory analysis. Higher order se kya murad aapki? So, matlab x squares le le, cubes le le. Oh, no, no, no. Then it would not be uh, linear. So, it would still be linear. Okay. It would still be linear if you start imagining x1 and x1 squared as different dimensions. Bilkul, sir, bilkul. Then it will be linear. Right, sir. Okay, but if you're visualizing x1 as a single dimension, then it will not be linear. So that's a more uh, complicated thing. Or, and if x1 or x squared are layer, right? so what do you think the um, these covariance matrix are going to turn out to be? So maybe somebody else can answer this. So the question is, ke ek mera feature x mein leta hon, aur main kehta hon, yaar, main iska squared wala feature bhi na ek aur le leta hon. So x squared bhi feature aajata hai. And then I make an estimation of what the covariance matrices are for with x1 as a separate. Sir, ye one squared is rank a, deficient ban jayega. Rank deficient ban jayega, exactly. It's going to turn out to be, uh, uh, so one of the eigenvalues I, will be zero. Okay, because one of the features is actually a function of the other. Right, sir. Okay. So positive, uh, sir. positive definite, uh, means hoga positive semi definite. Right? See. Sir, the probability ki baat ki thi, probability of lying on the CN boundary, that is zero. Vaise bhi agar humne, uh, agar 2D mein imagine kar rahe hain, to agar humne probability badani hogi for particular class, to hum area, area ki compute kar lenge. Mm -hmm. Kyunke jo hai, ye matlab ke area lekin infinite hoga, kyunke jo hai, wo pure plane pe dono classes hi, ratio calculate kar sakta actually wo pi ya jo uske true pro, ha, pi k ke barabar aana chahiye to ye hum kaise graphically dekh sakte hain area mere khayal mein zero zero aayega so actually zero nahi nahi area jo decision boundary ka to zero aayega lekin agar maine class ka calculate karne ka maine class 1 ka karna hai to main wo class 1 wala area calculate karunga wo jo class 1 aur class 2 dono ke infinite areas aa jayenge aur wo infinite ki jo ratios hain wo probability ratio ho jayengi ya kis tarah hai wo you infinitely hang, you know. So remember, there's a there's a there's a joint PDF on top of this, and which is another dimension, right? So actually, you're ca computing the volume under this PDF. And since the, since the total volume under this PDF is one, वो हमेशा one होगा, Yes, sir. Even though the area is infinity, even though the area is infinity, but the volume is going to be finite. Okay, just like I said, a single dis, uh, dimensional Gaussian distribution is length infinite, but area finite. Say yes, say yes, thank you. Achha. Achha, isme, there's another thing that um, I won't do here, but this was uh, one of the problems in one of the exams sometime, I don't remember when, which was that this analysis is only for is a simplified analysis when I said this is a simplified analysis, right? And I, I did this analysis for two classes only. What if this was three classes, right? Or five classes, right? And then I uh, will ask you to prove that the decision region boundaries are those will always be straight lines or those will always be hyperplanes. So, what is happening, roughly speaking? Just want to get a sense of whether you're going to be able to do it. Yani, isi well, example mein, let me. Uh, humne, uh, multiple probabilities. We have done 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 mult
right? So if I were to extend this to a three-dimensional case, right? Uh, so we are or kisi ko samjhai? So it's three class. And the third class is let's say another color. So this is red color here. So this is squares. Right. So how would you draw the decision boundaries? So that's what something that Hamza mentioned. Um, so how do you think you're going to uh, draw the decision boundaries? Why, uh, Farid? Sir, in this way, we have to individual two two points. Ko de ke... uh, sir, uh, Mukaddas, tell me. Sir, in this way, when class is three, then uh, decision boundaries zaruri hai ki ek hi ho lekin ek to phir hum uske us case mein decision boundaries bhi hamari zyada nahi ho jayengi agar class se zyada hoti jayengi yeah lekin phir then how would you lekin decision region to ek hi hona chahiye boundaries se bahut zyada ho sakti hai right lekin region to ek hona chahiye right so what i'm saying is ke there will be a single region there's a, there's going to be a single region this may, okay. if the feature reside in that region, your decision is going to be pink. And there's going to be another region which is non overlapping with the first region in which the decision is going to be red. And then there's going to be a third region which is not going to, which is going to be non overlapping with the first two regions. And if the features are not to be in that region, I'm going to say the, the decision is going to be yellow, right? And these three regions, the union of this actually forms R squared. How would I determine what those regions are? And that's my question. Anand, uh, so, uh, Anand, sir. Uh, so, I feel like decision boundaries should be more. Not more. Yes, more. Why should be more? How can you differentiate from one to There is something else that needs to go on here. So, this decision region that I have drawn, this Jee. will only be only to separate yellow from pink. Right, so in other words, yeah, this is what we hear again. If the feature reside on this side, that means the probability that it is yellow is greater than the probability that it is pink. It's maybe orthogonal, okay? So let me say this one thing again and then I'm going to move on to asking Rafe. I need to make alphabetically the account of Sam Rang from Adalaya. So Rafe, I'll just have some second change. <laughs> so, so green region boundary, green boundary just indicates that if the features apply over here to the, to the top of green, then yellow is more likely than pink. Okay. If the features are here on this side, then pink is more likely than yellow. Because that's what the only thing that green tells you. Up, if I compare yellow with red, I get, I'm going to get another boundary. Right? So let's say that boundary turns out to be, that boundary turns out to be something like this. Right? So this is a separation between red and yellow. Right? So then, Rafe, which is the region in which the yellow is the highest probability? The green is on the right and the red is on the right. Exactly. Excellent. 
ठीक है सो एंड दैट्स एन इंटरसेक्शन राइट बिकॉज इफ यू आर हियर एनी वेयर हियर एनी वेयर हियर दैट मीन द प्रोबिलिटी दैट येलो इज लाइक इज हायर देन पिंक एंड द प्रोबिलिटी दैट येलो इज हायर देन रेड दोनों की दोनों कंडीशन सेटिस्फाइड है right that means the probability that yellow, yellow is is a likely class that's the highest that's the perceived probability is the highest and therefore in this region uh in this region uh, in this region ye yellow ka region hai ठीक है एनी क्वेश्चन बात एंड यू कैन फाइंड आउट द अदर टू रीजन एज वेल यूजिंग सिमिलर आर्ग्यूमेंट बट द बॉटम लाइन इज कि इस डिसीजन रीजन की जो बाउंड्री है दैट स्टेज दैट स्टेज लीनियर ये है और ये है स्टेज लीनियर यहां पे सारा का सारा येलो का रीजन है बट हैज लीनियर बाउंड्रीज ओके जी राफे सर नंबर ऑफ डिसीजन बाउंड्रीज के माइनस वन है या सारे पेयर वाइज कॉम्बिनेशन है पेयर वाइज कॉम्बिनेशन बनेंगे जिसकी वजह से वो के माइनस वन मेरे ख्याल में मोस्ट लाइकली लाइन आएंगी सो माई अब तो टॉप ऑफ माय हेड मुझे लगता है कि इस केस पे हमें एक और लाइन की जरूरत नहीं होगी इसी एग्जांपल में नहीं होगी अभी ये तो मैंने सिर्फ एक बनाया ना तो फिर के ही आ रही है नहीं अभी आपको जो है अभी आपको सॉरी के होंगे लेकिन उसमें कुछ इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं बनेंगे दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग अभी आपको इसको और इसके درمیان में भी कंपेयर करना है यस दैट्स द ओनली कंपैरिजन दैट्स लेफ्ट एक्चुअली के के माइनस 1 ओवर 2 होंगे ना क्योंकि हमने जिस तरह नंबर ऑफ हैंडशेक्स देखते हैं वो वाले कॉम्बिनेशन देखने होंगे इसलिए के के माइनस वन ओवर टू उसमें कुछ जो है कुछ ही बच जाएगी दैट्स व्हाट आई फील हमारा लेकिन सो द बॉटम लाइन है कि आप इसका और इसके दरमियान में कंपेयर करेंगे एक और लाइन आएगी ठीक है एंड देन इंटरसेक्शंस के थ्रू आपके पास इसका एक रीजन आ जाएगा और एक ये रीजन आ जाएगा ओके राफे आपका क्वेश्चन है कोई या ये पहले का रेज हुआ है और किसी का क्वेश्चन है ओके सो लेट मी मूव ऑन टू try to answer another uh, question that was raised last time which was kiri what is the difference between uh, discriminative classifiers and uh, generative classifiers right so in order to address that uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to try to find out what the relationship between lda and logistic regression is okay <clears throat> so once again let me go back to um, lda uh, and focus on the two class problem only um, so where we said ki the, the probability that y equals 1 given x and theta is equal to some constant times e raised to power mu 1 transpose sigma inverse times x minus half uh, mu 1 transpose sigma inverse 
m mu f1 plus log of phi1. So this essentially um, is if I go back and show you uh, on the example, question I, this thing here. Okay, and we're just saying that there's a constant C outside and then this becomes equality. Okay, so the probability that y equals one is equal to some proportionality constant times this exponential term. Okay. Um, let me make my life a little bit easier. Um, and let me say KG, right? Let that beta k be equal to mu k transpose times sigma inverse and let gamma k be equal to minus half mu k transpose sigma inverse mu one plus log of phi k. Right, so in other words, what I'm saying is that this term is all of this. Let this be gamma and this term here be beta. Actually beta transpose. So we let beta transpose be this. Okay, so what that means is that um, probability that y equals k given x theta equals um, c times e raised to power beta k transpose x plus um, gamma k. Okay. All right. Can I find C? So where K equals either uh, one or a two. How do I find C? Uh, law of probability apply karke usko some they should be yeah one or one or two or three total. Two summation se karna. टोटल लॉस है टोटल लॉस है टोटल आप लगा लें राइट बट आई वु Theta plus probability that y equals two given x theta they should sum to one. Right, this probability should sum to one because there are only two classes. Right, if there are only two classes, so I take it is c e raised to power beta one transpose x plus gamma one. Plus c times e raised to power beta two transpose times x plus gamma two. This should equal to one, right? So what is c therefore? So therefore, c is just equal to one upon e raised to power beta one. Transpose x plus gamma one plus e raised to power beta two transpose x plus gamma two. Right. So what is therefore the probability that y equals one given x theta? That's just 
C times, that's a C times, C times this probability, right? C times this probability. So therefore this is um, E raised to power beta one transpose X plus gamma one divided by E raised to power E raised to power beta one transpose x plus gamma one plus e raised to power beta two transpose x. And if I simplify this a bit further, this can be written as one upon one plus e raised to power um, an exponential degree. Difference are jago terms ka beta one beta two. Right, so this would be beta two minus beta one. Beta two transpose minus beta one transpose times x plus gamma two minus gamma one. Right? Is this something that we've seen earlier? Sigma sigma function. This is actually sigmoid of uh, beta uh, two transpose minus beta one transpose times x plus gamma two minus gamma one, right? Which is exactly the modeling assumption that we had for what case, for what classifier? Logistic. Logistic regression, right? So this is the same, same posterior as logistic regression. Right, or uh, so LDA does what? LDA, given this set of features, right? So, given these set of features, well, feature space may a linear line draw karta hai LDA and says, Kiji, is line ke is taraf hai, to your, the, your prediction is going to be class label red or yellow, and is taraf hai, to your prediction is going to be class label uh, pink. But LDA does exactly the same. LDA, oh, sorry, logistic. Regression does exactly the same, and this was uh, an exercise as well um, in my notes as well. The logistic regression also defines a linear boundary between the decisions uh, between the, uh, the decision regions. Okay, so both LDA and logistic regression define a linear boundary. Not only that, LDA, which is a generative classifier, which makes a modeling assumption on the probability of the features given y. It turns out that when I compute the posterior, which is the probability of y given x, it turns out that posterior turns out to be exactly the same as I had assumed in my logistic regression problems, right? So does this mean that if I apply logistic regression, as opposed to, uh, and so what says I apply LDA, the classification results in both are gonna stay the same? So, what does this mean? Right, question is understood. What question is? Right, so question once again is that LDA. If you are using 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 LDA, the the posterior probability that you end up getting is of exactly the same form as you had in logistic regression, right? Does this mean that the boundary that you're gonna get with logistic regression is exactly the same as the boundary that you're gonna get with applying LDA? Yes or no? No. Why no? अभी तो मतलब फॉर्म का ही क्योंकि जो लॉजिस्टिक रिवेशन होता है उसमें बस ये सिग्मोइड में थीटा ट्रांसपोज एक्स की फॉर्म होती है यहाँ पे 
वो थीटा की जगह ये बीटास का डिफरेंस है जो कुछ सेंस बना सकती थी लेकिन साथ एक गैमा की टर्म भी है तो फिलहाल तो ये चीज ओके लेकिन a dc term as a as as a feature which is one theek hai so mai keh sakta hu exotic sir hum wo hamesha mai one lena shuru kar dun to i can write all of this as just some theta transpose x ye bhi kar sakta hu mai where x ke andar implicitly mai i am saying nahi nazar nahi aaya nahi aaya लेकिन सर ये हम देख नहीं रहे कि यहाँ पे जो हम बीटा जो भी हम फीचर्स ले रहे हैं थीटा की जगह यहाँ पे वो हम एल डी ए के अंदर जूम कर रहे हैं कि हाँ वो नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है सब यू के या सिग्मा है हालांकि रजिस्ट्रेशन के अंदर हमने ऐसी कोई जमशन उसके ऊपर नहीं लगा गुड तो फिर इसका रिजल्ट डिफरेंट आने चाहिए या नहीं आने चाहिए सो यूर यूर गेटिंग वैलिड पॉइंट क्योंकि द मॉडलिंग एजामशन दैट वी हैव इन एल डी एज वेरी डिफरेंट दैन द मॉडलिंग एजामशन दैट यू हैजिस्टिक रिजेशन राइट एंड मोर इम्पोर्टेंट आ जाएंगे सॉरी दोनों में उसमें हम बाउंड्री लर्न करते हैं इसमें हम फीचर्स लर्न कर रहे हैं और फिर बाउंड्री ड्रॉ हो रही है एग्जैक्टली राइट सो यूर गिवन द सेम ट्रेनिंग डेटा Taking the way your training things is different in LDA, and the way your training things in uh, logistic regression is different, so that will yield different boundaries. That will yield. So, यहाँ पे जो theta LDA से आएगा, that may not be the same as the theta that you get when you train logistic regression. होगा एक इसी तरह boundary है कि theta ही आ रहा होगा, right? Theta transpose times x ही form होगी. It's just that like these parameters that you end up getting. With LDA are not going to be the same as those that you get with logistic regression. Okay, so the boundaries may be different because training multiple ways. Because we are training multiple ways, because we are doing, so boundary be multiple ways. Because we need to come. Right? Question. But then what is the question? Question. Further, we should ask someone else. Okay. Then, who is better? मॉडलिंग एजम्पन जो हम ले रहे हैं वो एक्चुअली डेटा हुई डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉलो करता है तो ये एल डी बेहतर होगा अगर नहीं करता तो लॉजिस्टिक बेहतर होगा एक्सीलेंट ये आपने कहीं पढ़ा था या अभी इससे ख्याल आया नहीं सर आप जब वो इनिशियली जनरेटिव डिस्क्रिमिनेटिव का बताया तो उसमें क्लास में थोड़ी सी डिस्कशन इस टाइप की हुई थी ओके okay. ये फरीद ए एफ के क्या होता है चाय पी रहे थे सर खाना खाने के बाद तो फिर दैट मींस के सो द डिसीजन रीजन बाउंड्रीज आर गोइंग टू बी डिफरेंट व्हिच वन इज बेटर दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट द एक्चुअल मॉडल इज यार एक तो ये ऑनलाइन चीज है होल्ड ऑन Okay, good. Right. Um, another one of the points I want to make here is that you see LDA. के साथ आपने you made a modeling assumption, which was on the features themselves, and it resulted in a class posterior, which was a sigmoid, which is exactly the same as you get with the logistic regression. The question therefore arises that if the posterior is a sigmoid. Does it mean that the class features are Gaussian? And in other words, is this implication two-way? Right. So what I'm saying is, that LDA assumption, which is which is basically what assumption that the the features X. Given k, they follow a Gaussian distribution with a certain mu and with certain sigma. Right? This yields a logistic posterior. Right? So that's something we've done. 
right? So see above. The question then is, okay, if you have a logistic posterior, does this imply that this is true? In other words, is this a two-way implication? What do you no. think? No. Why not? Sir, you told me that logistic के रिजल्ट से पोस्टीरियर भी अगर हम एजम्पशन ले लें तो वो लॉजिस्टिक ही आता है आपसे सवाल पूछा था आपने बताया था या सो इट टर्न्स आउट कि यस दैट इज नॉट ट्रू दिस इज दिस इंप्लिकेशन डज नॉट होल्ड एंड द रीजन व्हाई डज नॉट होल्ड इज बिकॉज़ यू मे बी एबल टू फाइंड अदर जनरेटिव एजम्पशंस अदर जनरेटिव मॉडल्स यू मे बी एबल टू फाइंड अदर जनरेटिव मॉडल्स व्हिच विल यील्ड द सेम लॉजिस्टिक पोस्टीरियर सो other um, generative models will also lead to logistic posterior and uh, one of those is poisson ये मैं भी होमवर्क में पूछ लूंगा मैं सो पॉइसन भी इसकी तरफ लीड करती है राइट सो एल डी ए भी उसको लीड कर सकती है पॉइसन भी लीड कर सकती है और भी हो सकता है कोई और भी जनरेटिव मॉडल्स हो विच विल यील्ड द सेम लॉजिस्टिक प्रोसीडियर राइट सो द क्वेश्चन देन देर फॉर इसकी कौन सा बेहतर है कौन सा बेहतर नहीं है तो दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन वैसे वैसे If anybody asks you कि कौन सी चीज बेहतर है कौन सी चीज बेहतर नहीं है आप जो नाइनटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ टाइम योर आंसर कैन बी इट डिपेंड्स राइट एंड यूर गन बी राइट सो सो इट जस्ट टर्न आउट की एल डी ए मेक्स स्ट्रॉगर मॉडलिंग एजम्पन राइट सो दिस इज अट्रॉगर मॉडलिंग एजम्पन and the logistic is weaker modeling assumption why do i say uh, weaker modeling assumption less constraints hai uske upar uh, ke hamara kisna distributed hai yeah so less constraints in other words ke ji ho sakta hai wo uh, lda posterior follow kar raha hota uh, lda generative model follow kar raha hota ye ho sakta hai poisson model follow kar raha hota या कोई और फॉलो करा था वो सारे के सारे मॉडल्स कोड हैव एक्चुअली बीन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड विद द लॉजिस्टिक पोस्टीरियर राइट सो दैट्स यू कैन से इट्स अ वीकर मॉडलिंग एजम्पशन बिकॉज़ इट कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट अ हाई एज अ लार्जर क्लास ऑफ ऑफ जनरेटिव मॉडल्स राइट सो दैट्स व्हाई इट्स अ वीकर मॉडलिंग एजम्पशन सो इन दोस केसेस वेयर यू आर नॉट रियली श्योर इफ अबाउट द मॉडलिंग एजम्पशंस राइट सो इन दोस केसेस वेयर देयर इज अ मॉडलिंग मिसमैच logistic posterior would outperform lda right so for instance ke ag asal mein jo model data ke tha wo poisson tha lekin you start using lda right for 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 that learning process that will yield worse off results most likely than using a logistic regression model theek hai on the other hand if you if the data in fact followed the generative model that you start out with which for example was lda right model bhi wohi exactly follow kar raha tha so then lda would be a better bet uh, compared to uh, logistic regression and uh, you can see these discussions a little bit more detailed discussions insightful discussions uh, i think it's section 1.3 uh, in the sanford's notes uh, you can find them online cs229 ke um, so usme ek pura paragraph hai and if you are interested in more about this i think andrews andrew ka jo shayad uh, i think maybe phd ka kaam tha ya uh, i mean maybe one of his earlier works which was a sort of a seminal paper uh, that was uh, with regards to a comparison between uh, generative classifiers and discriminative classifiers theek hai usme wo highlight ke liye kab behtar hai kaun sa kab kya behtar hai and so on so theek hai Uh, that might be a good read for for sir uh, ek bar ye repeat kar denge logistic jo hai wo kis case mein behtar aa raha hai hamare paas so logistic posterior is going to be better in those cases in which there is a modeling mismatch okay theek ho gaya so let me lay out a scenario the scenario is ki aapko 
ट्रेनिंग डेटा मौजूद मिलता है ठीक है एंड यू यूज एल डी ए मॉडलिंग एजाम्पन टू फाइंड आउट वॉट दिसन रीजन बाउंड्री इज राइट इफ यू इफ इफ द एक्चुअल डेटा फॉलोड द एल डी ए मॉडल असल में जो मॉडल फॉलो कर रहा था वो भी एल डी ए मॉडलिंग एजाम्पन को सेटिस्फाई कर रहा था तो देन the classifier boundary that you're going to get with lda is going to give you better results compared to the classifier boundary that you're going to get with logistic regression theek ho gaya theek hai if if there was a modeling there was no modeling mismatch on the other hand if the actual data did not follow that lda model was followed some other model say for example a poisson model theek hai mm. you you used the lda modeling modeling assumption in that case logistic may turn out to be a better option so may turn out ya will turn out i mean so iske piche kya kuch hai asal mein sir bahut sari cheez random hoti hai na i mean for a given training data ho sakta hai acha ho jaye for some reason lekin on average chale aap keh le from variety wise on average logistic is going to be better जो मॉडलिंग एग्जाम्शन है वो बस यही है कि सिगमोइड जो है वो पोस्टीरियर होगा और इसलिए जो है हम मतलब ये जो हमारे जनरेटिव मॉडल है ये बेटर परफॉर्म कर जाएंगे जब हमारी मॉडलिंग एग्जाम्शन ठीक है लेकिन अगर हमारे बहुत ज्यादा ट्रेनिंग डेटा हो तो उस केस में हम ये कह सकते हैं कि जो भी अंडरलाइन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो लर्न कर लेगा और उस लिहाज से हमारे ये इवन विदाउट मॉडलिंग अगर डेटा ट्रेनिंग डेटा हमारे बहुत ज्यादा है तो जो है वो लॉजिस्टिक इस्तेमाल नॉट नेसेसरली नॉट नेसेसरली अगर ट्रेनिंग डेटा बहुत ज्यादा है तो ओके सो सो ट्रेनिंग डेटा अगर बहुत ज्यादा है तो और आप जो है एल डी ए फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूज कर रहे हैं लेकिन वो मॉडल जो है असल में वो गाउसिन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉलो नहीं कर रहा था तो उसमें तो जितना मर्जी ट्रेनिंग डेटा हो जाए योर एरर इज गन बी इज नॉट गोइंग टू रिड्यूस ठीक है उसके अंदर वो बायस से एक एरर आएगा हमेशा राइट लॉजिस्टिक के केस में आई हैव टू थिंक अबाउट दैट कि जी इफ यू स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग द ट्रेनिंग डेटा uh what they what the results be better uh i don't know for sure and i have to think about it okay sir maybe aap sochenge mujhe bataenge to main bas ye keh raha hu agar modeling assumption lda ki correct bhi hai wo gaussian distribution follow kar bhi raha hai to us lihaz se lda hum choose karenge lekin agar hamare paas training data sufficiently large hai to fir hum logistic ही लर्न करके उसकी जो भी अंडरलाइन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो इतना ज़्यादा डेटा से उसे लर्न कर लेनी चाहिए और उस लिहाज से लॉजिस्टिक थोड़ा सा ज्यादा जनरल या गो टू एल्गोरिदम आप उसे देख सकते हो फीलिंग and lda given that the data follows the lda model the boundary may turn out to be the same lekin uh, this is interesting problem to look into to verify ye mera guess hai ho sakta hai main galat keh raha hu aur ye is ye sari is tarah ki cheeze hum thodi si learning theory mein karenge not exactly like this lekin what happens when training data is very very large Uh, what can you say about the accuracy and so on and so forth? That's going to be the next chapter. But that's a very interesting question. Maybe something to think about for all of us. Okay, yeah, Asan. Okay, sir. Thank you. I said your questions. So I'm going to stop here, um, um, and this basically wraps up the chapter. Uh, so there's a uh, there's a diagonal LDA kind of little section. I'm going to skip that. Uh, I may not uh, cover it um, next. Tuesday, inshallah, we're going to start our discussions on learning theory.
like which was sort of related to information theory. Koi sawalat? Sir, we just start here and talk about the LDA and logistic application. Yeah. So, I told you that if we use LDA, we use the Gaussian distribution to follow the Gaussian distribution. So, we will get to the sigmoid. So, you said that both of the boundaries will not be the same. Yeah. But if we draw a sigmoid from the sigmoid, that the sigmoid should be greater than 0.5 or something, so the boundary is not the same. No, it's not linear, but it's not the same. It's not the same exactly. My question is that if we use the Gaussian distribution, then the theta is the same as we have written here. And if the logistics start to learn, then we can learn some other theta. Of course. Okay. 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 ये रिफ्लेक्स ठीक है चलें ये ये कलर्स अच्छे नहीं लग रहे यार मुझे तो बड़े तो पता लग रहे हैं कलर्स वाली चीजें ऐसा ये तो है ये तो है ये तो है चलें कोई और any any further questions and otherwise we can end the session let me stop recording now